Hey guys, welcome to another Elementor widget tutorial where you're not only learning everything about the text editor, but also about the container. We're gonna start right now. First of all, let's get rid of the website title and the page title. You do that by going to settings, then you go to page layout, and we're changing this to Elementor canvas. And now you drag and drop the text editor to this place. I first want to have a great background so that we can create something beautiful. How do we do that? If you move up now, you can see here, edit container, click on this one. Then you get container options. Now we go to style and we go to background type. We're gonna use a classic. You can also use a gradient or a video, but we're going with the classic. Then we click on the image and we're going to upload a new image to our website like this drag and drop any file you want over here and we're going to use this beautiful picture now i've added a picture as a background in the container however you cannot still see the container because of the height so what do we need to do we go to layout and then we are going to change the minimum height to vh and then we type in 50. so vh stands for viewport height as 100 is your entire screen and 50 is the half. If you want to have make it a full screen, then you use 100. Let's keep it on 50. But now our background image is not visible at all. Why not? Well, I've uploaded a 4K resolution. It's not fitting in this container. How do we change that? You go to style, then you go to position. And here you can change the position of your image. There is something coming up over there. But we also need to change the size. So let's change the size to cover. Now we can see her head. That's better. And if I choose contain, now you can see that it's being repeated. So what we actually want is to see the entire image. So we go to size and we choose contain. Now we have the entire image. Yeah, the image stops over here. But I don't want it to be repeated, so we're going to change the repeat to no repeat at all. The image is black with a woman on it, but I want it to be black also over here. We're going to click over here, color. We're going to add a black background. And now we have a beautiful black header. So what I want is actually I want to move this image a little bit more down. How are we going to do that? You go to position and we go to custom. And here we can change the entire image just the way we want it to be. So I want it to be on this size. Beautiful. This is how I want it. Well, that's okay. You just leave it over here. So now again, you learned something more about the container. If you keep following these all widget tutorials, you will be an expert in Elementor and also know exactly how the container element works. In case you're wondering, where do I find copyright free images for my website? Go over there. Follow my video and you will learn all the places where I get copyright free images and videos. All right, then we go back to our text widget. Just click on it. The text editor widget is like this. What do we see? We first see the text. It's always filled with this dummy text by Elementor. We will remove it in just a minute. Let's start on the top with all the buttons. Every widget has the three tabs, as you know. But we also found, but we also find in the text editor a add media button. If you click on it, you can just add your media from your library. Let's say I want to add this beautiful iPhone 38 and I press insert into post. Now I have a image within my text editor. I strongly advise you to not use this because within Elementor, you have, of course, a image widget which we just talked about in the last video. And it's way better to just drag and drop this image and drag it over here. And then you can change your text and change your image just the way you want to. So I can change it to the iPhone like this, but I want this image to be next to the text. Well, that's possible. You just go edit the container, just press edit container. Then we just go to layout. We go to items and here we can change all the direction of the widgets inside of this container. 
So I want the direction to be a row like this. Hey, here you go. Now we have two columns and we can just drag and drop this to the other side like this. Now we have the image on the left side and the text on the right side. But you can also add another widget inside of this row now. So if you click on widgets, let's add a heading. You can just place it over here. And now we have three widgets in one row. The size of each row you can easily change by just dragging this line over here or this line. You see? You're getting the hang of the container, so you're doing an excellent job. Well done. So for now we're going to remove the text, just right click on it and press delete, like this. And we're gonna delete also this image, press delete. Click on it. I rarely use this button to actually add some uh, icons, for example, inside of the text because there is no other way to do it quickly, but usually I never use the media. All right, then we have a visual and a text button and a dynamic tag. Of course, dynamic tags are for Elementor Pro only, so keep tuned for other videos. The first thing you notice about the text editor is that it is just a text editor like you know from Word, for example. You can select the text and make it bold, and you can go over here and drop down and you'll see all these different options. So let's create some text where we can work with. Get in digital shape. I press enter with the W press doctor. Now the thing about this is that when I select get in digital shape and I change this to a heading one, you can actually do that. Let's first make the color white so we can see better what we're doing. You go to style and here you can change the text color. Let's make it white. All right, let's get back to content. So when working with the text editor, you need to know that when you press enter, you get a new paragraph. This is a new paragraph. But when I press shift enter, I'll stay within the paragraph. Let me show you how this works. I'm with him. If I now place my text, my cursor over this text, and I change this, for example, to a heading two. So when I want to change this line to, for example, a H1, this is what happens. This entire thing changes to H1. Not only this is a new paragraph text. Now, why is that? Because it works exactly the same as like any text editor. You have to press shift, shift enter or enter. Now, let's get change this back to paragraph. So next are just the normal options you can do. You can change this with a bold text or italic or underlined. And if I want to make it a bulleted list, I can click on this. And remember, if you now press shift enter, you're just creating more text within the bullet. But when I press normal enter, then you can add another bullet. You can change it, of course, to a numbered list like this. And you can make links of text. So if you select your text, press on the insert link like this, and then you can paste in your URL or press on this button, link options, and then you get even more options. Let's make the URL my website and the links text will be WPress Doctor. If you change this text, you'll actually change it within the text editor. So we're gonna make it the same. When you're leaving your own website, always open in a new tab. So people are not actually gone. They can always go back to your website within the tabs. And you can also add your own page by clicking on your pages down here. I only have one page, so that's why it's here. All right, then we press add link. And now we have created a link of this. And when you press it, you just go to the website. What else do we have? We have the full screen editor. When you click on this, you will make the text editor go full screen. And now you can concentrate on your text only. This is useful when you're creating a blog and you're only having text and a few images. Then this is excellent. Let's close it. And then you also have this option, toolbar toggle. When you click on this, you even get more options. It's amazing. Let's select anything. And then you can just strike through. This is what happens. You can add a horizontal line. I better advise you to use the divider from Elementor itself, but all right. And you can change the text color. So let's, for example, let's change the color of this heading to orange. Now, I actually advise you not to use the colors over here, but to use the style tab. If you're 
going to change all the colors this way, it might be a little of a mess when you're all done. And when creating websites, it is better to use it in the style tab to change your colors and your typography than to change it over here with the color tab. Just a pro tip when starting out, learn yourself to use the style tab or else when you're trying to change something, uh, you won't know where it is. But you can use this, for example, to get another color in your title or just one word. When I try to change digital into white, for example, this is what happens. I can't see my digital over here. Oh, there it is. So it's also not very useful to use this. So let's delete all the colors on here like this. And then we can change it later on in the style tab. We have paste as text. This is very useful. Let me show you what happens. Now you can see all these codes, heading one, heading two. This is a link, href, and then our link target is blank. So it's open in a new window. And this is just the paragraph with the icon and the text and the bullets, well, we'll remove that. And if I go back and when I change this one to a bullet, this is how this works. This is how bullets work in HTML. We click on text and now you can see how this has been built up. Now you know how HTML works. It just is breaks with text and the computer and then your browser creates something beautiful out of it. Isn't that awesome? But when I go to visual, so for example, when I try to copy and paste some text from my own website like this, I press copy and I try to paste it in here. Look what happens. So you might think, well, this works great and it's just fine. The text is over here. But when I go to my text editor, you can actually see the rubbish that comes with this. What's this? Div class, PB rows, columns, text layouts, classes, and then it starts with the H3 welcome and all these kind of divs. So you're actually copying a lot of HTML rubbish that you don't want to have within your website. Why? All this HTML, all this HTML will be read by someone else's browser and this will cause a lot of unexpected behavior within your website. So when you're pasting text and you're like, why is this not working? What is happening? The first thing you should do is actually go to text and see if there's any strange things like div classes anywhere. And when you see it, you now know that this is just rubbish and you have to clean it all out. That's a lot of work. But what you can actually do is go back to visual we're going to press Ctrl Z on my keyboard. So now the text is gone. And then I use this button, paste the text. When I click on it, this shows. Pasting is now in plain text. Yes. And I just press paste. And now you can see when you go to text that my text that I pasted in is entirely clean. No formatting, no HTML tags. So this is why this button is very useful. We go back to visual and we're going to turn it off for now. But now you know how it works. However, press Ctrl set on your keyboard. Cleaning up might take you some time if you're gonna do it manually, but you can also use this button. Just select it, what you need to clean up and press this button, clear formatting, right there. Now as the formatting is gone, well, it's supposed to be. When I go to text and I scroll down, I still see all these divs. Those are not supposed to be there and it might cause some behavior that you don't that you don't like. These divs are empty, but it's just not the way it's supposed to be. So when you're pasting text, use this icon and then it will save you a lot of trouble. I'm going to remove this text again. Next within the icons, we have the block quote. So let's create a awesome block quote. When I start working out, clear mind, muscle body, that's the way I like it. Thank you, doctor. Right, then we select this text and we're gonna make a block quote of it right there. And now we have a block quote, which does not really show very well in here. We're gonna style this in just a minute. Then we have the alignment, of course. So let's say this is a new paragraph. I want to align it on the center or I wanna align it on the right. This is where it goes. I do not recommend using this line out because you can also do it in style and it works not the same because when I align it in the center, see what's happening in your text. It is a HTML text and this on your style tab is going to be CSS. There is a big difference 
And keep in mind that building your website is always better to do it with the Elementor Style tab instead of doing it like this. But if you're secretly doing it, I won't tell. So we're going to remove this alignment right there. Then we go to this icon, special characters, of course, very useful. And you can use to make your, your indent decrease or increase like this and this. Undo, Ctrl Z or redo, Ctrl Y on your keyboard. And then you have all the keyboard short, shortcuts there are. If you're creating a lot of text, it's actually very useful to read this and use them in your workflow because it will save you a ton of time. Then we have something that sounds like an action movie thing. The drop cap. But it's actually just when you, but when you press on it, the first letter will become a big one. So you can create really creative stuff while using the drop cap. Let's leave it on because we're going to style it uh, in a few minutes. If you look to columns, this is another great feature. You can actually create different columns without using the container. So let's say I want this specific text editor. I want it to have two columns, just press on it. And now we have two columns. What it does, it actually divides your text equally in the two columns. But what about when I want to have three columns? No problem. Elementor got you covered. Now we have three columns or maybe six or why not nine? When using these columns, you don't have to create another widget and another widget to get these columns. You can actually do it within one text editor. However, sometimes you still need to have different text editor widgets, but now you know how it works. You can also change the column gap with this slider like this. And of course you have to change it to three, for example, and then you can see how this is actually working. Really great. Let's keep this back to default. All right, that's it for the content. Let's go to the style tab. In the style tab, it really gets fun. With the alignment, you can change your text to the center or the right side or justify it if you have a lot of text. If you press on it again, you will cancel the alignment. All right, the text color. If you want to change your text colors, well, I've already talked about the global colors and how to add them and use them. Very powerful. Please use them. If you don't know what I'm saying, please go to the first video about the heading widget and then I'll explain exactly how this works. Go to your text color. Here you can change, of course, the color of your entire text. And here also comes a little bit of a problem because if I have a paragraph with my text and I only want to change the title, the H1 title, that's not possible this way. How are you going to do that? Well, you actually add another heading widget like this, drop it over here. And then you can see, oh, this is all wrong. So then we go to the outer container and we go into a layout. We go to change the items as we just press on this icon and now it's over here. And now we have it again. And then we go to our heading and then we can change the style and the color of this header like this and the typography. And this is very important because when I want to change my text editor, I only can change the color of this, but I can only change the typography and I can only change the family font of my entire text. So this heading won't change if I'm not using another widget. So, so what have we learned? When creating your website, don't use the headings inside of your text editor, but leave this for your text. Of course. So just the best practice you should know because we have some practical problems right now. Because when I change the size, this is what's going to happen. I can only change my text and not the heading. So how do I change the size of this H1? Well, actually, you cannot do this within the text editor. You have to go to the theme customizer and then it's a lot of work. So take my advice. If you want to create headings, use the heading widget like this. But normally you can just change the text size over here. The weight, what is the weight? Well, it's actually making your text more bold like this. With the transform options, you can make it completely uppercase, lowercase or capitalize, or just keep it normal. That is default. And you can change the style, normal, italic and oblique. Oblique is just a little different from italic. You won't see it with every font, like this is not working, but real designers know what I'm talking about. Any decoration, you can change it to underline 
overline, line through, or none, which is default. And with the line height, you can actually create more spacing or just remove the space like this. Letter spacing, of course, and word spacing to get more space between your words. That was all the typography. If you messed it up, don't worry, just pre press this button back to default. And now we're all back to our defaults. And then we have text shadows. If you click on this icon, you actually see nothing happens because of the color. Let's use the color picker and let's make it not transparent at all, like this, make it white. And then when I change the blur, you will see, oh, there are the shadows. Change the horizontal, here we go. Well, I think it's hideous, but you get the idea. Bring back to default. And then the last option within the style editor is the drop cap. When you click on it, you get the view, you can make it stacked, you can make it framed. And this way you have complete control over this drop cap and you can change the color of it, of course. Make it a real nice color. You can use a secondary color. It is the background within the box like this. And you can add a shadow. You can't see the shadow right now because we need to use a secondary color. So let's remove the secondary, secondary color and add the text shadow. And I want to change the blur. There is our shadow. Like this. Remember, it only creates a shadow of the letter, not of the frame. You can change the size of this thing. You can make it huge. And the spacing, of course. You can change the size. And the border radius to create rounded colors or to make it entirely round. It's all up to you. And you can make the border wide even bigger. Whatever you want. And finally, you can change the typography, which, gi which gives you full control over the letter and the sizing and the weight and the transform and the style and, well, everything you want. These styles are exactly the same as the typography over here. Let's go to the last step, which is advanced. And in the advanced, you can see all the options we already discussed, so I'm not gonna do it again. However, I want to point out one thing, because when you're using motion effects like this, and you have the entrance animation, which is pretty cool, you use it to uh, fade in from the left, for example, like this, it creates a really great effect. However, keep in mind that when you are creating one text editor block, you can only use the entrance animation on one block. Well, what do I mean by that? For example, on this website, you see that there is a delay in the different... For example, on my own website, you see there is a delay in the different titles coming in. You can only achieve that if you're creating more heading widgets or text editor widgets, because with only one widget, the entrance animation will only be added to the entire widget. Keep that in mind when creating your website, it will save you a lot of trouble. Congratulations, you just learned another widget. If you have questions, comments, or you just want to say thank you, drop them down in the comments. I always read them and reply them because I love you guys. And if you want to see more widgets or other WordPress related videos, subscribe to the channel and watch another video. I'll see you in the next video and I wish you an awesome day.